that this video is going to kind of talk about expected value and expected utility. So this is uh, for chapter four, where we're talking about uh, how economists model uncertainty. And we want to distinguish uncertain choices in economics and finance from uh, choices over, that we call choices with uh, certainty. If you're at the, uh, a restaurant and you're choosing between having like a, say a cheeseburger and, or a chicken wrap, um, then you, you know what you're getting and you make a choice there and you, you're going to know what utility you get from, those, um, from each of those consumption choices. But there are cases, and especially in finance, where at the point in time where you have to make a decision, you're not sure exactly what you're going to get if you choose one co course of action. So you could think if you're you're going to buy a lottery ticket, you of course don't know if that lottery ticket is going to win you any money or if it's going to be a loser. If you knew, of course, that the choice would be trivial, you'd take you'd buy the ticket that's a winner and you, you know, wouldn't buy the ticket that's a loser. But the point is you have to make a decision about uh, whether to buy the lottery ticket before you know how uh, what's going to happen with the ticket. So this is why we uh, need to have a, a way to model this. And so the, when we go ahead to model this, what we do is we assume that we, um, it, we're, we assume we're going to have gambles or lotteries. We'll use this term pretty generically just to refer to any kind of situation out there in the world where there's more than one outcome that's going to be possible and there are going to be probabilities associated with them. So, and, and uh, for this class, we're going to be focusing exclusively on money amounts. So the outcomes are, are going to be different amounts of money that a person might be able to uh, end up with. And, and we'll also keep it simple in that we'll have relatively small numbers of outcomes. We'll look at two or three outcomes just to, to sort of illustrate the, uh, the, the uh, what's involved here with a, a uh, choice about something that would be could could be considered like a gamble or a lottery as opposed to a deterministic choice. So um, with, with that in mind, we can get started here and just think about a few gambles first. And so one thing you can think of is how about a gamble um, you're going to flip a coin and that coin could have come up heads or tails. So, and, and we'll assume it's a fair coin, so it's a probability of one half each time. You could, you could win $200 or you could lose $200. So this would be a, a, a classic case here where, where we have some uncertainty. You are making a choice about whether you want to accept this coin flip or not, and you have to make a decision or not before you know which way the, the coin flip is going to come up. Now, expected values, you can calculate expected values uh, of outcomes like this. And expected value is just going to be a probability Expected values are based on probabilities times dollar amounts. And since you have more than one possible outcome, you'd have to add these up. So, so, so another way to think of it is sort of like a weighted, um, a weighted average, where the weights that you apply to different dollar amounts are the probabilities of each of those outcomes. So if we take this uh, coin flip event here, you could win $200 or lose $200. So, a fair coin, the probabilities would be one half in each case. You could win 200, so let's call that plus 200. And then you have a probability one half that you could lose 200. And then you know, it, we'll make that a negative because it's a loss. And you simply do the calculation here and add it up. In this case, the expected value is going to be zero. But again, the idea for an expected uh, value is you have probabilities and dollar amounts. You multiply the probability of each event or in each uh, different dollar amount you might end up with by that dollar amount and add up. Uh, you can have other events uh, as well. So for instance, you could have, um, <clears throat> let's say you have the, uh, the possibility that you, have, you could have a loss. 
And so you can have a, a case where you can have a loss of $10,000. And so this might go correspond to something like, oh, this could be the value of your car. And there's a possibility of having an accident or that the car could be stolen. Um, and let's just say that that probability of the loss is 0.1. And then no loss would be the probability of no loss would be about 0.9. or a zero dollar loss. So in this case here, you could do the expected value and you'd be taking, in this case, the probability 0.1 times, in this case, the uh, loss, which would be minus $10,000. And then point 0.9, which is the probability of no loss times a loss of zero dollars and then you'd add this up and, and you'd get an expected value here of minus 1,000. So these are expected values, probabilities times dollar amounts. Now we have to get to uh, expected utilities. Let me erase this here. Now, what we're going to do for expected utilities is we're going to assume that people get, uh, we're not going to worry about the dollar amounts, we're going to assume that there's a utility function. Utility function is going to give you a utility of different amounts of money. And we call it an expected utility because what we're going to do is do the same thing as what we were doing with ex expected value, probability times dollar amounts, but instead of the dollar amount, we're going to use the utility of that dollar amount. So expected utility will be a probability times a utility of money. And then we would add that up for each of the different outcomes, uh, possible outcomes in our, our gamble or, or lottery. So, um, and here we have to do it a little bit different than uh, we were talking about before, because before I was talking about that flipping of the coin and you know, win $200 or lose $200, um, we would calculate an expected value there just in terms of whether you're going to uh, win or lose money. but. Here, for our utility of money function, we're going to actually have to know how much money or wealth a person has. So what we would have to do is uh, tell that story to say like, oh, let's say you start with $1,000. Now you're going to flip a coin. If it comes up heads, you get you win $200, but if it comes up tails, you lose $200, okay? So modifying that story that we had before a little bit. Um, And now you're going to end up with um, $800 or $1,200. And again, that was that same coin flip of win or lose $200 as we had before. But now we have to say, oh, for our utility of money, we have to say how much money you had before you took the coin flip. I said in this case $1,000. So now we can compare the expected value the expected value, again, since it's a coin flip, we one half times 800. Plus one half times 1200. And then expected, uh, that's, that's, a, that's supposed to be V. One problem here with EV and EU is that they look pretty similar on the board. So, but the expected utility by contrast would be one half times the utility of $800 plus one half times the utility of $1,200. Okay. So again, see how this is different. You see how this expected utility parallels the expected value. It's the same kind of calculation, 
but you're simply using a different number here. It is a utility of money. And we'll do one more example here because let's go back to that uh, uh, loss. And we can uh, <clears throat> show that loss of $10,000 that we had up there before. Well, let's say we have to say how much money a, a person would start with. And, and let's say that they would have started with $20,000. So we have a, a possibility, a probability point one that they lose this $10,000 that we were start, talking about before. But they start with you'd start with 20,000. So in this case, the expected value, well, you'd have a, a point one probability of losing that $10,000. And if you started with $20,000, well, you'd end up with $10,000 after the loss. And then a, a point nine probability uh, that you'd have no loss, so you just keep the twenty thousand dollars that you had, and then compare that to the expected utility in this calculation. Oops, need one more zero there. And then this would be the expected utility uh, calculation. Again, you can see how expected utility is similar to expected value, but then also how it differs. And then what do we do with these expected utility values? Well, the great thing about uh, expected utility is that you can look at any two gambles and you make this calculation. And if you have an actual mathematical function in here, you can actually calculate a value for this uh, utility of different amounts of money. You do that expected utility calculation, you get a number. You compare any two lotteries, the uh, lottery for which you get the bigger number is the lottery you prefer. That's what we mean by having this uh, utility of money function that's going to represent uh, somebody's uh, preferences. Different people might have different utility of money functions. And, and again, and just uh, we mentioned this before when we were talking about utility, the numbers itself have no intrinsic um, there's no intrinsic meaning in terms of like a unit of expected utility. All again, all we really use is that uh, a lottery that gives you a higher expected utility number is a lottery you would prefer to a lottery that would give you a lower expected utility number. Uh, so uh, again, it's, it's, it's very nice and convenient when I mean, you think of all the different kinds of lotteries you go over, over money with a utility function here, you could like really simplify the process of, of making uh, uh, comparisons or, or seeing how this person might make comparisons. Different people could have different uh, utility of money functions and particularly then what we're really doing is representing the, the types of preferences they'll have. This is related to the idea of risk aversion. A different mathematical function could represent a different amount of risk averse, how uh, risk aversion, how uh, risk, how much people dislike risk or whether they're willing to accept risk. And since different people could have different utility functions, it's possible that two people might compare two different gambles and one person might choose gamble A over gamble B. The other person might choose gamble B over gamble A. That's perfectly fine. And, and that you know, we, we see a lot of heterogeneity. People aren't the same and they're going to make different choices. So this is in short uh, the idea of expected utility, how it's related to expected value and uh, and why we're using it here in, in, in finance and economics.